It's time to take command with former NFL tight end Logan Paulson and former Commander's Beat reporter Craig Hoffman. Take Command podcast from Odyssey Sports. That's Logan Paulson, played 10 years in the NFL at tight end. You're watching on the video. That was hilarious because I said, this is Logan Paulson. And Logan went down to pick something up off the ground and completely disappeared out of the video. Uh, I am Craig Hoffman. I am present. I am here in my little square on the box. Uh, You can watch full episodes, youtube.com slash at 1067. The fan, you can listen to me every weekday, three to six on the team 980. All right, Logan, the obvious next big question for this team is what for the other two guys? So Allen, check signed 18 months ago although he doesn't have any guaranteed money from what i understand left on his deal uh, oh, which sure. is interesting so like next year if all of a sudden he starts to decline and they want to move off of allen they could i do i think that's going to happen absolutely not but financially speaking they could um then you got sweat who is entering the final year of his deal and then you have Chase, who technically is also entering the final year of his deal, unless they were to pick up his fifth year option. So, uh, do I have that right, or is he got one more after this? I think it's. I think you're right. I think, he's I think a this year is. Behind I think Montez, this is it. Right? Yeah, because this is this is year four. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, with that said, uh, what? Let's start off with what you think they should do. Not not a prediction, but like right. you're you're all of a sudden in the position that everyone wants you in and somewhere working in the organization. Actually, no, they want you as, or wanted you as offensive coordinator. How happy are you that Eric Bannon got named offensive coordinator? I'm pretty happy that about it. You don't have to be told that you should be the offensive coordinator anymore. So I'm now, now everyone's going to want awesome Logan. Guy, yeah. yeah. Now, now everyone wants Logan in the front office. Uh, so you're, you're running it. You're yeah. in charge. What are you doing with sweat? What are you doing with chase young? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk with the financial people and really make sure, <clears throat> just see what that contract structure for Montez would look like. And I think that's the most important thing because we thought this pain thing was not tenable. But obviously, like, you can work financial magic, right? That's why, I like, New Orleans every year, they're, you know, whatever they are over the cap, $100 million, whatever crazy number it is, and they're always able to kind of move money around and make it work. So that's the first person I'm going to talk to, right? And to kind of see what needs to happen, see – kind of the numbers we're talking about, and then look at the rest of the roster, guys like Cam, and see where we're at with that. I will say, like, my first inclination is to always trade away guys when you're still on the roster. So, like, Montez, like, to me, he's a perfect trade candidate. Like, that does not mean I don't like Montez. I think Montez is excellent, right? I think he's a really good football player, but I think he has value, and I want to make sure I recoup that value if I cannot financially retain him. So if I can't do that, I'm going to trade him, and I think this is a really good year you know, in the draft to kind of draft maybe an heir apparent or someone who can kind of hold the line, toe the line. And you've shown how you want to build this team. And so one of the things I want to talk about is you mentioned you can't run away from two interior guys. And the answer is you can usually, right? You can attack the perimeter. And one of the things they've done here with James Smith-Williams, with Casey Tuhill, with F.A. Obata, with Sweat and Chase is they set really good edges to this defense. And so, Ken, is that a skill set that requires a lot of money to find it is a skill but it's not like this premium pass rusher skill right and the way they're they're structuring this defensive line is hey rushers edge rushers you are supplementing the interior guys right you're building off of their rush so you really just need a guy who's going to be very very solid on the edge a very good role player and i think that is easier to find than people think now is it easy no but is it easier than finding tj watt absolutely so I do think you've kind of shown the direction you want to take this defensive line. You want good players, um, but do you need, you know, four guys making $20 million on the defensive line? Probably not. So I would, I would definitely kind of kick the tires on the Montez thing. I think he is a a very good value add. He's been very productive for this team. And I would probably kick the tires on him before I kick the tires on chase in terms of an extension, in terms of finding ways to get him money. Um, Just because I think there's a lot of risk associated with Chase, not that Chase can't be good, not that Chase won't be good, but he's got the injury history. He's got kind of lackluster production the last couple of years. So I think that's kind of the way I would frame that. And I know that's not a very good answer, but I think there's information that we don't necessarily have access to that would inform this decision at a higher level. But I like Montez. I, I like what he's doing. I think he's a great value add, but can financially we keep him? That's something only in the building they know with those accountants and financial advisors. Um, and then if I can't keep him, 
I'm going to explore trade options. And that, that probably is happening sooner rather than later. Yeah. I think I would explore trading Chase. Um, mm. I think that he potentially, I don't know. I just clicked on spot tracks like market value uh, yeah. button, which they do. They do a calculation. I'm not exactly sure how they do it. But I mean, part of it, the biggest factor is like, how do you compare to other players like you? What did they get at a similar age when they signed their contracts? And so you click on Montez and his market value, 16, six average annual salary chase. They've got it 18, two. If that's how those two are seen around the league. And I think I can get a first round pick for chase young. I might just, I might just do it. I mean, yeah. we, we proved last year we can win without that guy. Um, not to say that Chase didn't come back and show some things and that that special upside isn't really valuable, but and, and and isn't potentially great. And do you want to be the team that trades a guy who could wind up in the Hall of Fame? Not really. Not ideal. Uh, but that's the kind of upside Chase Young has. That said, if you can pay Montez at a lower number, get a lot of production and then, you know, draft the next guy or whatever. I would, I would certainly consider it. And, and yeah. the thing that I think they need to do that they've been bad at is doing this Belichick style. You do it one year too soon, not one year too late. Because part of the risk of one year too late is you don't actually get to do anything. You get a third round pick. That's really a fourth in terms of a compensatory pick a la Brandon Sheriff. It's just sure. bad roster management. And this is my whole NBA thing where at the, in the NBA, they trade expiring contracts all the time. Uh, because the idea of letting a guy get to free agency is like the worst thing you could do. Um, by the way, of course, that's what the Wizards are doing potentially with Kyle Kuzma and Chris Ops for Zingas, but oh, this is the Take Command podcast where we talk about the commanders. Um, the so, so I think that one, depending on how your free agency period goes and how if how much movement you want to do, like, and if Chase Rurier retires, do you want to restructure John Allen? Like, do you want to restructure Leno? Like, you could get sweat done this off season if you really want sure. to. Um, and I do wonder if some of the expediency in getting things done with pain is to That's say, like, That's Hey, let's, yeah. let's use the next between now and training camp. And they don't even have to do it then. Like they could do it all the way into the season. There is some deadline eventually, but um, they could work into, into the season on a, an extension for sweat. So they've got time on, as opposed to pain who the, the deadline was July because of, the, there's a tag deadline they've got time but you know depending on what you do depending on how the draft goes you know if, if you feel like you have a guy you can replace chase like i think it's worth kicking the tires on absolutely um, i agree and so i getting the maximum value out of these guys is not ultimately going to be paying all four of them it's just not just not good roster construction i know that there's a lot of fans now are looking at this pain deal and going like wow, the way they structured it, like they could, we don't need to talk about this. They could keep all four. They could, right. but that's, that's resources not you, allocated somewhere else. Yeah. I don't think you want to do that. It's, and obviously D line is a, is a position of like premium value in the NFL, but I think, think about corner, like defensive back specifically, like this league is going, it's such a pass happy group and this defense runs when that secondary is clicking. Like that's when the defense is really at its best, right? Everyone talks about the defensive line, but the secondary especially like when they were on their winning streak, were playing phenomenal football, right? So can you add another piece there? Like that's the problem is like, yes, you could put all your chips in on defensive line, but as much as I like Montez, he's not a, a true elite difference maker as a pass rusher. Is he good? Right. Yes, but he's not going to be like a 15 sack guy. Like I just don't see that in his, in his thing, right? Is he excellent against the run? Yes. Does he work well with Deron and John? Yes. Does he get excellent hustle and finish sacks? Yes. Do I love him as a football player? Yes. The problem is he's not going to be elite. So if you can kind of lock him in in that like 14 to $16 million area, I think that's outstanding. And then again, that would be a very team friendly deal. And I think that works. And then it still allows you to kind of say, we can build in secondary, we can do whatever we need to do. We can add an offensive lineman. We can, you know, work on whatever we need to work on. But I just think like that's to, to extend both of them, I think is, I don't know. It, it just doesn't seem like it makes a whole lot of sense to me, um, especially given like I, I hate to say this because like I don't like talking about people's money, but especially given Chase's kind of lackluster production over the last couple of years. Like it's just it, the risk there is not great. Like Duran has been ascending. 
Sweat has been ascending, and Chase has kind of stayed in the same vein, same right. same river. He hasn't had the chance to ascend because right. he's yeah, been I'm hurt. Not, yeah, um, and again, that's not his fault, but it is something to consider when talking about extending him. Right. The only way I would consider extending Chase is, I mean, well, obviously, I don't think extending Chase is on the table now, right? Where Sweat, it's it's on the table now to me. Yeah. Chase seems like too big of a risk. The and, and it doesn't seem like he would take some super team friendly deal. Like if Chase is like, "Hey, man, I just want to get paid. Like my knee scares me. Give me sixteen. I'm willing to risk it." And it's kind of like the Steph Curry contract back in the day. Mm -hmm. The Warriors signed Steph Curry to what is the best contract in NBA history because Steph's ankles were a disaster. He kept hurting them, and they got him on like a twelve million dollar a year deal. It was, it was four for forty four. Um, yeah. I think was actually the the number. And they had the MVP of the league on a bizarro friendly contract uh for four years and if chase is like i'm willing to take that risk because like i want the money i want to, i want some guaranteed money i want to get to my second contract then i think you have to consider it chase young doesn't seem like that type of guy chase young is going to bet on himself he's going to come out he's going to try to ball out this year and then he's going to try to get one of the richest deep and con or edge contracts in the history of the league next offseason and that's sure. you know if i was advising chase that's what I would also tell Chase to do. So that's not a yeah. shot at Chase. Like, that's absolutely what he should do. Um, the question is, is there a team that is willing to take on that risk and be like, hey, we'll be the incumbent when that comes around and we'll be able to franchise tag him and, and have that exclusivity and we'll give you a first round pick for that in return. And if that's the yeah. case, like, I think I'd probably take that. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, again, it's it's risk versus reward. That's all you're doing here, right? And Right now, I do think there is a level of risk associated with Chase that a lot of people don't want to acknowledge. And I think there is value there because, again, I think back to my evaluation of him coming out, and he was one of the best pass rushers off the edge in college football that I had ever seen. He was fantastic. And so the fact that teams still have that in their mind. So I do think there's going to be a lot of value there. And so, yeah. again, this is just – we could talk in circles about this all day, but it's just – what is the risk associated with the player? What is the financial probability of getting them at a team-friendly number? And then can we make that work? And it, right now, it seems like that is more likely for Montez as opposed right. to Chase. So the, the one thing I'll just add real quick, uh, and hopefully this isn't more just going in circles, but an actual new piece of thing or new piece of information is I, I feel like some people are probably screaming at whatever device they're listening or watching right now going like, Craig, aren't you the guy that was like, Chase actually was pretty good. Like people should be encouraged about Chase, you know, yeah. yada, yada. It's like, yes. So what changed? What changed is they signed to Ron Payne. They yeah. made their decision that they are not going to invest in both edge guys. They're going to invest in the middle. Yeah. That's where they put the money. So one of these edge guys has got to go to continue good roster management. And so, I, I think that's that's, a great that's what's changed to me is like I still think Chase Young can be a very very good football player, but you got you can't just play this out with with these guys and consider it prudent roster management. That said, one thing to consider is that Ron Rivera has got to win now. Ron yeah. Rivera can if Ron wins this year and he's here next year, he's going to be on an extension. So at that point, he can afford to do a little bit more long-term planning and, and maybe do some, you know, work a trade or something next off season. Ron probably wants to keep both these guys right now. If he thinks they can help, like a, Chase is going to help more this year than a first round pick likely. So I think that is something to consider as well Is like they're the one situation where ownership is affecting the football decisions is they've got a coach who happens to be the president of football operations who knows he's got to win right now and that is a result of the ownership situation uh being unresolved and ultimately a new owner taking a hard look at Rivera as soon as he gets here and this season kind of being all important so I, I think that's important to keep in mind over top of all of this yeah I agree thanks for watching this clip of take command first why don't you why don't you like it it lets other people know that it was good and then they should watch it too and Logan we have a new exclusive home for full episodes we do. 1067, the fans' YouTube page. Go check it out and please subscribe. Yeah, do, do what Logan said. Do He's it. Very, very smart. <laughs>